in the last lecture we have discussed about the force equations in a magnetic circuits right in this lecture we will discuss the design of electromagnetics okay so how to design the electromagnet or how to design the any electromechanical system or electromagnetic system so the design is not a uh, specified procedure design is an it, uh, iterative procedure where we have to work towards with respect to one particular objective let us say we want to design a system consider a system i want to design this system to meet higher efficiency for a given power rating and i want to produce this much of torque so the design has to consider these three requirements and after doing the final design so we have to meet the same requirements okay so this uh, in the design there is no specific solution or there is no specific approach because of the multiple constraints and multiple multiple variables present in the system okay for designing the electromagnet we have some variables we have uh, consider as a assumptions and some variables we have to consider as a defined values and we have to make the iterative process to meet the required objective now in this lecture we'll see how to design the electromagnet here we can see one electromagnet designed in the design of electric motors course okay where the electromagnet is this one e type electromagnet is designed and other side we have the i type bar okay so this is the i type bar it is get attracted towards the electromagnet once the coil is excited so how to design this kind of system or electromagnet for door locking system or for lifting the weights are for electrical uh, electromagnet for relay and other applications the design procedure is same depends upon the objective we have to do the iterative process okay so first i will start the design of this kind of electromagnets okay consider the electromagnet in our analysis we have consider a c type core which is stationary and i type core which is moving right and with respect to the depth this is the depth of the core c type core like side view of the this electromagnet and if we will define the variables like what are the dimensions this width is nothing but e w and this width also e w and back iron height is nothing but b w and height of the window is h w from this point to this point this is the h w and air gap length is g okay earlier we have consider lg by 2 right lg by 2 is nothing but g i am considering with a variable and this height is nothing but again ew with respect to the x axis the dimensions are this one is ew and uh, this is the width of the window that is ww and again it is ew and c type core of a permeability mu and area of cross section ac and the area of cross section with respect to this core also ac okay and depth is nothing but dw okay depth of the c type core as well as i type core is dw now we will consider the coil okay which is placed on a 
C type core. This is the coil which is present in the inner layer and on top of that we have n number of conductors. Okay. like this manner. Similarly, at the top so this is the complete coil area okay, where n number of wires we are making as a coil and the other end is this one and it has a number of turns n and excited with current i. So, we can see here this is the assume that this is a core on top of that we are making a winding ok. I am considering the uh, copper wire and we are making the winding on the core ok. So, we can see here Okay. So, this is the inner layer on top of that one more layer will do like that n number of layers I have represented here. So, the inner layer is this one this is the inner layer and second layer third fourth fifth sixth like that n number of layers are there in the circuit to make the coil. Okay. So, this is the circuit what we are going to design. So, first step I will consider I am we are seeing this copper wire right how to select this copper wire. First step I am uh, discussing with respect to the copper wire how to select the copper wire SWG ok. So, the current density with respect to the copper wire J equals to RMS current per unit area that is cross sectional area of the conductor ok. So, A C equals to I R M S divided by current density ok. It is in M M square, but uh, current density in ampere per meter square or M M square ok. So, if we know the area of the cross section of a copper wire then based on this A C we can select the SWG of a wire based on the data sheets ok. If let us take 1 mm square is the copper area conductor area or 0.1 mm square is the conductor area. So, with respect to this conductor area we can select the SWG wire of a uh, data SWG wire data. Now, the current density for copper is 3 into 10 power 6 ampere per meter square for copper similarly for aluminum and different materials has different current densities ok. Next step we will see the MMF apply the amperes law and MMF is equals to Hg like intensity with respect to the air gap and length of the air gap plus H C into L C that is uh, MMF with respect to the core is equals to N into I ok. And third equation with respect to the Faraday's law ok we have derived the inductance inductance value right L equals to what N square by reluctance or N into phi by I ok any one equation we can find. So, from this uh, equation 2 and this is equation 2 and this is equation 3 if you want to find the reluctance we can find it or inductance is given and reluctance also know then we want to find the number of turns we can calculate it based on equation 2 and equation 3. So, from equation 3 n equals to square root of inductance into reluctance or inductance by permeance square root ok. Next step we will see the 
magnet uh, like this is the electromagnet right this is the I core and this is the E type core right in this example or C type core. So, how to select the area product? So, we will see that one. Consider the window area available for winding is AW. So, this is a C type core means available window area is this much right this is the available window area. So, this height is HW and width is WW. So, available window area is nothing but HW into WW mm square ok this much area is available for designing this type of electromagnets. But if we will see this electromagnet here whatever the electromagnet is designed in the laboratory as a part of course here two uh, areas are there this is first area and this is the second area. So, we can add these two areas to find the actual available window area for windings ok. So, we can see here like this two segments are there. So, the available window area for windings are these two ok. Now, we will see the how many number of turns we can place to make the winding. So, consider n number of turns are there with a area of cross section A C then how to fit this number of turns into the available area A W. So, A W I am considering into some window factor should be equals to n into A C. Here this is K W is nothing but window utilization factor. generally this value 0.5 to 0.75 depends upon the designer and expertise skills ok. A w into k w is equals to n into a c this is equation 4 ok. From the inductance equation L equals to what? N phi by i right. So, n into flux I am replacing with magnetic fields over a area a is nothing but cross sectional area of the core and magnetic maximum flux density is B m and n is the number of turns divided by i and here i is nothing but ma maximum current ok. From here if we will bring a c at one side and remaining terms if we will push that side L into I L into I m divided by n into B m. So, here if we want to relate the maximum current and RMS current crust factor is nothing but K c K c equals to I m by I RMS ok. So, from the crust factor we can derive the A c value A c equals to L into I m divided by K c crust factor into n into maximum flux density. So, this is equation 5. So, from equation 4 and equation 5 if we will get the area product ok. So, based on the area product we will select the cores like this, this is the I core what is the area product, this is the E type core what is the area product ok. So, for uh, magnetic core selection we have to find the area product A c into A w equals to from equation 4 we can get A w that is n into A c divided by 
kw into ac is nothing but l into im divided by kc into n into maximum flux density here ac is nothing but what from the equation 1 if we will see the equation 1 this is the equation 1 right ac equals to what i rms per current density so n into i rms divided by current density into kw and ac term l into im divided by kc n bm all terms will follow n n will cancel each other l im square divided by kc kw into current density into maximum flux density so this is the final area product so if we will replace l into im square as a energy stored in the magnetic circuit 2 into el because half li square right el is nothing but that is why 2 into el i am considering directly kc kw into current density and maximum flux density so once we know the area product okay based on this area product we will select the different type of cores whether it is c type core or e type core or any type of core depends upon the data sheets we will find the area product first and once we know the area product then we can do the remaining analysis okay so for the uh, for the required area product we have selected so and so core whether this core is uh, able to accommodate the predesigned number of tons or not so in order to check that window area factor so the new window area into window utilization factor should be greater than n into ac this is the window check equation okay for the selected core let us assume that this core we are selecting so this core has a window area aw1 okay so this aw1 into this kw should be greater than the the number of tons into area of cross section and next step we will find the reluctances okay reluctances with respect to the core and with respect to the air gap so with respect to the core it is nothing but lc by mu naught mu r into ac with respect to the air gap lg divided by permeability of the free space into cross sectional area of the air gap okay now as of now we have seen the magnetic circuit with respect to the area product like how to select the magnetic core and inductances and number of tons and how to select the gauge now uh, let us see here the electromagnet okay here we are seeing uh, seeing this coil right okay so what is the coil resistance how to find this resistance resistance generally r equals to rho l by a right area of cross section of the conductor so here l c or l coil and a coil okay or coil i will replace it because lc term we have used it for length mean length of a core like that right so here rho, rho l coil divided by area of the coil so first we have to find the length of a coil and then area of a coil and then based upon the resist, uh, resistivity value we can find the resistance of a coil right so first we will see the length of a coil okay how to find the length of a coil okay let us take the uh, i type core on top of that i am making the winding for example 
So, this is layer 1 ok. If we will see from this direction the length of a single turn is nothing but perimeter of this i bar ok. This is i bar this perimeter plus the 8 times the diameter of the coil right will you agree. So, if we will see the diagram. So, this is the core having a cross sectional area or perimeter of uh, this thing and we are making the coil like this manner. This is single ton. So, if you want to find this length of a single ton coil and if we will divide like this. So, this length is nothing but width of this i core and height of this high core at the y axis side. So, width will be x axis side and height will be y axis side that is what I am representing here with respect to our analysis this is B w and this is D w and diameter of a wire and here also diameter of a wire and this side diameter and this side diameter. So, the total perimeter of a coil or a single turn is equals to what first length of a single turn we will calculate single turn is equals to 2 into d plus b w plus d plus d plus d w plus d. So, this is the perimeter of a single uh, turn right the red color one this is single turn ok in the inner layer. So, for simplification I am representing this term with x and this term with y. So, the uh, perimeter or length of a single turn is nothing but 2 into x plus y ok. Now, what we have uh, calculated length of a single turn we can see here i core length of a single turn we have calculated such turns we have n number of turns in the inner layer ok. We can see here n number of turns are there in one layer. So, first we will calculate this length of length of a coil with respect to this n turns and then on top of that n number of coils we are making right on top of that second layer third layer up to n layer we can see here in this one. So, here on top of one another n number of layers are arranged in this manner from top to bottom ok. So, first we will calculate the length with respect to the inner layer that is equals to 2 into x plus y <coughs> into k 1 where k 1 is nothing but conductors or turns present in the inner layer. Okay, that is equals to window width into packing factor divided by diameter of a wire okay, where p f is a packing factor. Generally it will be 0 0.8 to 0 0.9 ok. Once we know the k 1 value that is number of tons in a inner layer ok, how many number of tons are there in a inner layer we can see here, here n number of layers are there that is k 1 number of layers are, uh, like tons are there in a inner layer. So, the equation with respect to find the length of a inner layer of a coil equals to 2 into x plus y into k 1. Now, we want to find the total length of a coil ok, where n number of layers are stacked one another in this we can observe. Initially one layer is there at the inner side and on top of that n layers are there ok. So, we will find the coil length for this n number of layers. So, same thing I have presented 
in this image okay with respect to the inner layer we have calculated now with respect to the layer 2 layer 3 layer 4 up to the n layers we will calculate it the resistance value okay with respect to the n layers the resistance value is nothing but uh, like a length of a wire total wire is equals to 2 into x plus y into k1 this is with respect to layer 1 plus 2 into x plus y plus 4 d into k 1 this is with respect to layer 2 plus 2 into x plus y plus 8 d into k 1 this is layer 3 and so on for nth layer 2 into x plus y plus 4 into n minus 1 into d into k 1. So, this is the total length of a wire. Why I am considering here 4 d for second layer means if I will draw a second layer here in the same image this is the second layer ok. From here to here one more d is adding from here to here one more d from here to here another d and from here to here one more d like that total 8 d is added to the circuit. So, that is why I am adding layer uh, layer 1 plus 4 d into 2 ok here we can see that 2 into 4 d is nothing but 8 d right. So, here total we are adding 8 d to the first layer ok. So, this is second layer equation with respect to the first layer equation this one we are adding extra 8 d ok. The extra length is coming here and here, here, here. So, 4 plus 4 8 d right. So, that 8 d we are adding in layer 2. So, the generalized equation to find the length of a coil is nothing but this one and the final equation we can see length of a wire is equals to 2 into k 1 into n into x plus y plus 4 into n minus 1 into d. So, this is the length of a coil equation ok. So, earlier equation 6 this is equation 7 equation 8 and then this is equation 9 ok. So, here n is nothing but number of layers ok that is equals to H w height of the window into window utilization factor into packing factor divided by diameter of the conductor. Here we know the height of the conductor, we know the window utilization factor, we know the packing factor and diameter also we know. Once we know the cross sectional area of the conductor then we can find the diameter of the conductor also. So, length of a coil or length of a wire we can calculate from this expression. Here diameter of a wire is equals to pi r square right generally for a circular uh, conductor. So, here sorry this is area, area is equals to pi r square right for a circular conductor. So, r equals to square root of a c divided by pi then diameter equals to 2 into radius that will result in 2 into square root of a c divided by pi this is in mm a c in mm square ok length of a wire the units are mm or meters ok. Once we know the length then we will find the resistance of a coil. So, R coil is equals to rho L 
by A C ok. From this expression we can find the resistance of a coil where rho is the resistivity of a copper that is equals to for copper material it is 1.72 into 10 power minus 8 ohm meter and for aluminum it is 2.6 into 10 power minus 8 ohm meter ok. This is for copper above 1 and below 1 is for aluminum. So, once we know the resistivity and length of a coil and area of uh, conductor then the calculation of resistance is easy. After that <coughs> how to find the <coughs> volume of a coil and weight of a coil. Volume of a coil is equals to area into length right area of a wire is nothing but AC length of a wire is nothing but L wire. So, if we will multiply these two things from the earlier equations. So, this is equation 9 and diameter equation 10 and this is equation 11. So, from the equation this is equation 1 and this is equation 9 ok. So, if we will multiply those two things then we can find the volume of a coil in mm cube ok. Now, we will find the weight of a coil. How to find the weight of a coil or weight of a copper is nothing but W coil or wire is equals to density into volume. So, density for different materials it will be different. So, for example, for copper density will be 8900 kg per meter cube ok and volume we know from the equation 12. So, from equation 12 and the density value then we can find the weight of a coil that is equation 13 ok. Now, how to find the weight of a core magnetic core it is same equation weight of a core is nothing but density of a core into volume of the core ok. Once we know the density and volume then the estimation of weight of a core is easy. For iron core density will be 7.65 gram per centimeter cube ok. Similarly, for different materials different densities we can uh, see based on the density values we can find the weight of a core. Now, what is the voltage applied to the coil or voltage required to excite the coil V equals to I into R where R is series resistance in the electrical circuit. Okay. Finally, as of now the magnetic circuit design and coil design are discussed. Now, we will discuss about the force equations. Force is equals to partial derivative of field energy with respect to the displacement over a flux linkages constant or field energy is done and co energy is nothing but dou field co energy partial derivative with respect to the displacement 
where i is constant okay based on this expression we can find the force acting at the air gap so if you want to replace the displacement with the air gap we can replace this thing with air gap okay for a linear system force equals to half i square dl by dg here uh, g is nothing but air gap length so the final force equation from the earlier lectures b square by 2 mu naught into 2 ag here lg equals to 2 into g right based on this thing this equation is derived so this equation number is Seventeen. Okay. Now, what is the force required to lift the mass or to attract the I bar? If the spring constant is there to overcome the spring uh, spring force, how much force uh, we uh, we have to generate with respect to the electrical uh, circuit is nothing but F equals to m into a. If there is no spring just we want to lift the mass of m with acceleration a m d square x by dt square this is nothing but f required force to lift this mass at a acceleration of d square x by dt square then we require this much force f m and if spring constant or spring is involved with respect to the moving object then required force should be greater than mass into acceleration plus spring constant into displacement okay or distance either g or x i am considering here g m a plus k into g so we found the like uh, we have discussed the uh, electrical circuit design with respect to the coil how many number of turns are required and what is the swg and resistance length volume weight everything and with respect to the magnetic circuit also how to select the magnetic core and uh, length uh, area products and inductance and reluctance all those things we have discussed at the end we have to find the efficiency of the system right efficiency is nothing but input minus losses divided by output sorry divided by input okay this is the generalized equation for the efficiency right here the losses involved in the system are copper loss with respect to the series resistance r at the electrical circuit and magnetic circuit loss that is core losses and with respect to the mechanical circuit mechanical losses friction and windage okay so copper losses can be calculated easily that is i square r losses and core losses are classified into two categories one is hysteresis losses and eddy current losses so the basic formula for the hysteresis losses hysteresis coefficient into maximum flux density power 1.5 into frequency and eddy current losses uh, basic equation eddy current loss coefficient into b max square into f square based on these two equations we can find the losses with respect to the magnetic circuit and losses with respect to the electrical circuit losses with respect to the mechanical circuit so friction and windage losses uh, approximately 1 to 2 percent or less than that we can see otherwise we can neglect it so mainly copper loss and core losses in the electromagnets will be there 
and based on this equations we can find the losses and then the efficiency can be calculated the efficiency equation number is 19 ok. So, with this equations we can find uh, we can find the different parameters of the electromagnet system. So, once we know the the parameters and different equations then we can design the any type of electromagnet system either it can be door locking system or lifting the mass or it can be any relays or other places or any other applications. The procedure will be same depends upon the objective like if we are designing the system to attain the maximum efficiency then at the end after following all these steps or all these equations we should meet the same efficiency as per the required objective. The design is completely iterative process and it involves different variables and different constraints and different assumptions. So, whether at the end of our design we are meeting the actual requirement or not if we are fulfilling the requirement then our design is valid. With this I am concluding this lecture ok. In this lecture we have discussed the design of electromagnet. Thank you.